of God. It's Jubilee. It's time to praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for our nation restored by your grace. Thank you, Lord, through your blood we are redeemed. Thank you, Lord, in our distress you have rescued us. Through it all we have overcome and we thank you for the victory. It's true, believe.
my friends, welcome to another program, another evening when we will take the time to share the Word of God with you. You are watching your Bible study, your virtual Bible study program, which is Life in the Word. And indeed, it is a pleasure to be sharing with you one more time. I promise you this, you have another very interesting, it's an evening with a program that will excite you, it will inspire you, and there will be an impartation to you tonight. I can assure you that. But before I go into the study of the word, I just want to encourage all of you who are watching, please take the time to be sharing your comments. And I want to thank those of you who have already been sharing your comments. Uh, some of you have been making some recommendations for which we are indeed grateful and we will seek to implement them as we go along to improve this broadcast to you. Also, just to say to you, if you have questions, please post your questions. I must say that we have not had much questions thus far, but as soon as these questions are posted, as they are relevant to the studies, we will be responding to them on our programs. So please do not be afraid of asking the questions. That is why we are here, studying the word of God together. Now, I also want to invite you to take the time to subscribe to our, our YouTube channel. It, it, it is Leo Hall and you know it's listed on the Leo Hall and we want to thank those of you who have already subscribed to the channel. Now, we still want more of you to be subscribing. We want to push up the numbers. Uh, the more persons we have subscribing, it will be of benefit to us as we seek to further do what God has called us to be doing. Now, we also want to invite you to, to take the time to visit the Amazon bookstore and to support our book ministry. There are books there. And the one that I want to introduce to you today is To Have and to Hold. And this book is designed to spiritually strengthen and enrich marriages. And it offers biblical principles uh, to deep marital commitment while enabling relational growth. So go on to Amazon now, buy it. Buy it as a gift for somebody getting married. Buy it for, as a gift for somebody who is already married, but you believe it will be a benefit to their marriages so that they can grow in the Lord. There are other books on, on like Engaging the Supernatural or Devotional Declaration, which you can buy to support the ministry. But this is the book I am introducing to you, to you today. Again, please make your comments using uh, our number 754-242. 2592 on WhatsApp or you can send straight texts or you can make your comments as some of you have been doing via YouTube or you can make your comments on Facebook and just want to welcome the, the, the list the, the, the viewers on LinkedIn and also those who are on Twitter watching us you know we are excited that we are able to be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ on these medium to the glory and the honor of God. Now, as we study today, uh, the, the study is one that I believe that all of us will find very, very interesting. And before I do that, I will just invite us to let us bow our heads. Let us approach our God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, to you be the glory and the honor forever. And we are grateful every time we are called together in fellowship. Because in fellowship, truly, we grow warmer, just as in discipleship, we grow stronger. And this is a time of fellowship and discipleship. And we pray, God, as we do this together, we become better in you. So may you anoint us even now in a fresh way through the power of your spirit, even as we seek to study together your word and this we ask in Jesus precious name amen and amen now our study reflection today the, the focus really is going to be 
how can we free ourselves from bitterness? So we may title it Freedom from Bitterness. That is the study focus as we recognize there are many persons who are going through very difficult periods in terms of bitterness based on life experiences. The, 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 the relational hurts we have encountered and we are now wrestling with the whole aspect as to how do we get to a place of grace to demonstrate forgiveness and to remove ourselves from the hurts that we are encountering. Because the truth is that all of us at some point in time struggle with bitterness in our lives and bitterness can become like a stronghold upon us and if we are not careful it will deny us from becoming who God wants us to be in him. So we need to allow the scriptures to address us in ways that will bring us to new levels in Christ Jesus. Now, the passage of focus, the main passage, is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 to 32. And it reads thus, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ Jesus forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ has loved us, given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Now, another passage I will twin this with is found in Ruth chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. It reads thus, but, the, but she said to them, Do not call me Nehomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Nehomi, since the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me? Now, in Ephesians, we are instructed to get rid of all bitterness. But before we begin discussing how and why this must be done, it is very important to realize that the basis for all of our actions in this regard must be what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. The text tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32, it tells us, even as God in Christ forgave us. In essence, it's, it's what Jesus did in the giving of himself while we have a responsibility in the living of the life that we are now living. So all of our actions, in everything we do, in everything we desire to be, we must seek to become imitators of God in Christ Jesus. Otherwise, the life we live is a vain life. So what am I getting at here today, my friends? If we are going to address this theme, we must reflect on it under that sense, knowing that it is to the glory and the honor of God why we seek to get rid of every form of bitterness from our lives. Because we want to live in ways that bring honor and glory to Him. It, it, God must get all the glory in what we do or say. If God is not getting the glory, then whatever we are doing or saying means nothing much. So, we have to be careful, my friend. As we seek to address this, I want to draw our attention to the Old Testament passage. Because here in the book of Ruth, there was a woman whose name is Naomi. Her name actually means pleasant. And here Naomi she had moved away from Israel. She along with her husband and their sons. But her husband had died and within the next 10 years, both of her sons died as well. She made some comments I believe you should find very interesting. Because these comments are very 
relevant because many of us are making them today without even being conscious of it. She made these comments to her daughters-in-law saying, and, and I'm at chapter 1 of Ruth 13, the, the, the second section of that verse. No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Here was a woman who was completely overtaken by bitterness. She, she was grieving to the point that her hurts were, were now overtaking her whole life. And she had reached the place where the bitterness was extreme. There are many of us who are hurting. And in the, the state of hurt, we have become bitter. And we have even become bitter against some of the people who we should appreciate in our lives. We have become bitter even against the very one who has given us the breath that we breathe. As was the case here with Naomi. Naomi, sisters and brothers, Naomi was reflecting on her life, believing that she had a right to be bitter. Her bitterness was so deep that she was willing to change the very meaning, the very essence of her name from pleasant to bitter. And that's what I have read earlier in the verses 20 and 21. When she said to them, Do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. I went out full and now I'm coming home empty. So why are you giving me that name? Why are you calling me pleasant? There's nothing pleasant about my life. That's basically what this woman is saying. Isn't it interesting, my friends, that many of us, as we go about life, we, 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 we want to change the very identity of who we are in Christ. To our identity of being pleasant. To an identity of bitterness. Our identity of joy. To an identity of sorrow and gloom. Yes, she had experienced a rough life. Yes, she had cause to mourn. Her husband had died. Her two sons have died. And she was at a very desperate state of being. So you can understand why she wrestled. But it is worrying when we wrestle with our problems that we become bitter. So Naomi's bitterness was towards God. And, and we, we, we see this. It was God who had taken away her husband. It was God who had taken away her sons. And she held it against him. God, you have done this. And we see this five times in these three verses. She held God accountable for her bitterness. There are, so, there are some of us today. Not only are we bitter... But many of us enjoy being bitter. We, we, you know, we, we somehow believe that it is necessary. We feed on our bitterness. We hold on to it as if it is something that we cannot and we should not let go. There, there are some of us like, like Naomi who are bitter against God. And we don't understand and we are holding on to something that God wants us to let go. My friends, my brother, my sister. There are other people in the Bible as well, you know, beside Naomi, who are also very bitter. For example, Jonah was a very bitter man. In Jonah chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, the Bible speaks to us and it says, And it happened when... The sun arose, that God prepared a vehement east wind, and the sun beat on Jonah's head, 
so that he grew faint. Then he wished death for himself and said, It is better for me to die than to live. Then God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about him? In other words, God was asking him a question. Is it right for you to be angry? And he said, It is right for me to be angry, even to death. The bitterness had overtaken who he was. Remember, Jonah was given a full ministry. And it was a ministry to go and warn a people. And Jonah's prejudice against these people gave him reluctance that he was willing to flee to another place. Only to be captured by God in the, 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 the stomach of a whale and to be brought to a place where he came and delivered this message. But even in the presentation of the message, Jonah was hoping that the people would not be penitent. Jonah was hoping that the people would eventually um, succumb to and, 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 and then the wrath of God would be released against them. But instead, we saw a penitent people. But they were, while they were penitent, Jonah became bitter. Isn't it interesting, my, my friends? That sometimes the people who offend us, they are penitent and they sought our forgiveness. But instead of us releasing them with grace because of their penitence, we became bitter. So in essence, the people here were experiencing the victory of God in their lives because of their penitence. And they were walking under the shadow of God's grace and were enjoying the blessings of God because of their penitence. But here we have the man of God who brought the ministry of God who, who, to, to lift them out of their situation who was now in a state of bitterness. And his bitterness brought him to a place that he was so bitter with God's people that he became bitter with even a plant. With a tree. A tree that brought him shade. And when the shade was gone, he became bitter. So many of us are bitter, my friend. And God wants us to get past our bitterness. Jonah, my friends, believed that he had a right to be bitter. He had a right to be angry with God. He had a right, you know, to be angry because, God, you are wrong to forgive the people. Why do you forgive them? You are wrong to, 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 to brought deliverance to them. God, why don't you destroy them? You know, do you notice? That when we are bitter, we don't want to see the progress of those who we are bitter against. We really fume at God for blessing those who we are bitter against. When we see them, when we see them progressing, we start to complain to God why they, they are progressing. When we see the blessings of God upon their lives, we start to question God and ask God, why are you doing that to them? It's all because of our bit. Bitterness is a funny thing, my friend. But the sad thing is that many of us don't even understand what it is I am talking about. So with that in mind, I'm going to try and bring clarity to what I'm saying to us. Using the scriptures and using the definitions of these words to, to bring enlightenment to what is taking place in our lives. Here, my friends, we have to understand that bitterness is something that is in it is something that is rooted in the heart in the same way my friends compassion it is something that is from inside it is not just something that we behave it is something that is coming from deep within so when you see people showing love it is because deep inside they are loving when you see people being bitter it means that deep inside they are bitterness. So let me define bitterness for us that we can understand where I am going. Bitterness is really a spirit of animosity. It is really a spirit of cynicism. It is negative anger. It is being hostile towards another. It is to resent and, and in essence to be bitter against someone. Bitterness, my friend, is a spirit of hatred working in the life of a person through malice and grudge. Yes, I want you to hear me. I, I, let me say that again. I say, bitterness is a spirit. Yes, a spirit of hatred 
working in the life of a person through malice and hatred. Because you may be saying, how can that be? Let me explain it clearer. Because malice, my friend, is to harbor evil intent towards another person. Malice, my friend, is to desire bad towards another. That means you do not want to see good come to that person. You are malicious towards the person. And some of us are malicious to the point that we will tell lie to see the end of the person, to see the, the feeling of the person, to see the fall of the person, to see the falter ring of the person. And there are so many of us who are malicious, my friend. And grudge is something, is to carry a vengeful thought towards another. It is a persistent feeling of ill will, a resentment resulting from past insult or injury. So there are many of us who are carrying around some things and say, look, I'm going to hurt him. He was the one who hurt me first and I will have to hurt him back. It's not going to end like this. I have to do it to him as he did it to me. He created my situation so I will have to destroy him as well. That's what many of us say. That's, that's in essence, that's a spirit of grudge at work right there. And we need to understand that's not how God wants us to work. In essence, this here I'm talking is bitterness at work. It is, it is an unrighteous indignation. It is ungodly. It is not right. And God is not pleased. And there are many of us who are normally feeling guilty to sinful behavior. But the sad thing is that there are many, many of us who feel no sense of guilt towards being bitter. We believe that, oh, it's all right. They are the ones who create the situation. That's how we tend to behave, my friend. But we have to understand that the Bible addresses us well. In Romans 12, verse 19, the Bible speaks clearly on this matter. It says, Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Can you imagine God speaking to us and said, Do not avenge yourself? Do not seek to, to take vengeance on your own. Can you imagine, my friend, God speaking to you and, and speaking to all of us and saying, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, a reminder that my word has already documented it. Vengeance is mine, I will repay. But yet many of us are carrying around this feeling, this emotion that we must bring vengeance, we must take vengeance, we must, we must do unto the person as the person did unto us. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, the Bible tells us, be angry. Yes, the person did it and you're upset, be angry, that's fine. But do not sin. In other words, as you become angry by the bitterness, by, by the, 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 the offense done against you. As you become angry by the hurt you have experienced. The word of God said, do not sin. In other words, control your emotions. Control yourself. Put everything into subjection to the glory and the honor of God. Do not allow the devil to triumph because of the situation you, have, you are encountering. Yes, he did it to you. Yes, she did it to you. Yes, you, are, you have all right to be angry. But do not sin, my friend. And then, you know, I love that verse because it did not end there. That verse did not end there. It, 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 it continues in a nice way. And it says, do not, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. You know, Psalm Psalm. Psalm 4.4 4 tells you that be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart and your bed and be still. In essence, God is saying, look, be angry, do not sin. Do not allow the sin to manipulate your life. 
yes, you are angry by the situation, but don't, don't, don't lose control of who you are in Him. Meditate on it. Think about it within your heart and your bed. But be still and know that God is still God. Trust God to address, to arrest the situation. That is, that is so powerful, my friend. God reminding us that he's in control. You see, the problem with many of us is that we are angry. We become hostile. We become resentful. We become bitter. And this reality has blinded our eyes. So we are not able to see. We are not able to think. We are not even able to see where we have gone wrong because of our bitterness. We say things without being thoughtful. We do things without even contemplating what we have done. And God is not pleased. God said, yes, it's okay to be angry. That's righteous indignation. And there's nothing wrong about being angry. But the challenge is, and I am challenging you in the name of Jesus, do not sin. Do not lose the righteousness of your being. Yes, you, 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 you're, 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 you're really annoyed by the behavior. You're, you're really upset by the behavior. But God says, control yourself. Do not sin. Isn't it wonderful that God can speak to us in clear ways and challenge us not to fall into a state of sin by what is happening around us? Isn't it wonderful that even in our times of struggle, even though we, we have been offended, that God is still reminding us, God is still speaking to us. Do not allow bitterness to overtake the situation, but take stock of the situation through the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we need the power of the Holy Spirit in times like this, that, that though we have been offended, we are going to stand firm in our God and do what is right. Isn't it wonderful, my friend? So the word of God is telling us, and it, it speaks clearly. I love Ephesians 4, 26. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. How often we go to our beds so mad. How often it, it happens to me. I, 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 I'm talking to you. The, yes, your online pastor is talking to you. I am here telling you, there are times I go to my bed mad. But is it godly? No. You lose a sense of peace. The, the sleep was not peaceful. Can you imagine us going to our bed, being absent from the presence and the, the, the glory of God? Is it worth it, my friend, to be so... plain landscape you see a sense that the root is breaking through the root created some effect on the building and it became cracked and it, and because of that you'll have to spend some money to effect repairs you'll have to restore the roadway because of the damage being done by the root sisters and brothers roots is a funny thing Although sometimes we do not see the root, my friend. Roots will still be doing some damage and yet we do not see it. Yes. It does not mean that because we have not seen the root, the root is absent. Because the root is, is being nourished. It's drawing from us. The root, my friend, is something that is dear and it's only a matter of time before they pop up, they come up, the tree bloom. The fruit, my friend, is a direct effect based on the root. And we must understand that the, 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 the root enables the production of the fruit. So if there's no root, then there won't be any fruit, my friend. So basically, I want us to understand that whatever root exists, then it is that fruit that will be produced. 
if the plant, the roots are oranges, then we'll have fruits which are oranges, or mangoes, or apples. In the same way, my friend, you must understand, if the root is bitter, then the fruit will be bitter. So if, if, if we have a bitter fruit rooted in our hearts, then what will happen is that eventually bitterness will come from the life we live. We'll be bitter in our behavior. We'll be bitter in our words. We'll be bitter in our, our attitude. We'll be bitter towards others because it is rooted in our hearts. Oh, glory be to God. God, I pray against that spirit right now. Hallelujah. The root, my friend, must be dealt with because the fruit is born or bears a direct relation based on the root producing it we cannot avoid that that's the reality my friend so what does this mean if you look at the text carefully lest any root of bitterness springing up and i'm still dealing with hebrews 12 and verse 15 lest any root of bitterness spring up cause trouble and by this many become defiled in other words they become filthy bitterness leads to a defilement in our lifestyle in essence my friend bitterness is destroying who we are in christ it is ruining the very walk with god we cannot walk together with him because of the, the bitterness in our lives who cannot walk unless they agree there is a separation in our lives with Christ based on the fact that the root in our lives is a bitter root the, it, it is not God at work anymore it is the, the, the bitterness coming out so we, we everything we do everything we say is bitterness coming out God wants to deal with that bitterness my friend in the name of Jesus I, 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 I speak to you this this evening I speak to you tonight in the name of Jesus and I say address the root the root is the problem my friend address the root you have become bitter because it is rooted in your spirit it is rooted in your heart unless you address the root you are going to be manifesting the fruit my friend unless you address the root uh, the, 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 the fruit will be coming out why you are telling lie on your neighbor it's because there is a spirit of bitterness my friend why you're doing the thing that you do to destroy your brother it's because there is a fruit of bitterness in your life it's time to address the root and i'm here to help you my friend in the name of jesus i command i command that fruit that root that is rooted in your spirit to dry up right now in the name of Jesus it's time for God to get the glory my friend it's it's time for us to address it we are rooting up some stuff because bitterness has been for too long manipulating your lifestyle it for too long manipulating how you behave and how you think and 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 and, and it manipulates your relationship that's why you cannot in be in a lasting relationship because you have been bitter for too long and unless the root is uprooted tonight you're going to be destroying your relationship tomorrow but in the name of jesus we command that spirit to go to tonight in the name of jesus i command it to dry by the root in the name of jesus i command it out of your life because enough is enough it's time for you to get rid of the spirit of malice it's time for you to get rid of the spirit of grudge it's time for you to live in love it's time for you to live oh in grace it's time for you to be who god wants you to be as a child of the king hallelujah oh glory so we uproot the spirit in the name of jesus christ oh hallelujah so lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble and by this many become defiled that's what the word of God says and we cannot allow it to happen so how do we resolve this how do we get to a place where we can address the bitterness coming from our lives I, I want to quickly share four resolutions with us can I do that my friends 
for resolutions. And these resolutions, I think, are very important to who we will become. As we get rid of bitterness from us, get rid of the malice and the grudge, the hatred in us, the first thing is the first resolution. Resolution one, let it go. Can I, can, I, can I say this to you, my friend? Let it go. In other words, whatever issue that you are wrestling with, whatever that situation, whatever caused that feeling, that emotion, that is stirring, that spirit of bitterness, let it go. Because this is important. If you are going to my friend, if you are going to become who God wants you to be, to be, you have to get rid of what is holding you back. You have to get rid of the spirit of bitterness. So this is what Ephesians chapter 4 is addressing. Listen to what it says again. It says, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. In other words, let it go, my friend. Because there are many of us who are holding on to bitter experiences and we are trying our best to justify it by saying, this has happened. How can I just let it go after being hurt for so long? I have been wounded for a long time. How do you expect me to just put it down like that? That's what many of us are saying, my friend. But I'm here to tell you in the name of Jesus what God is saying that when you are letting it go, you are letting God. That's why he says, vengeance is mine. That's why he's saying, my friend, he's saying that the battle is not yours, it's mine. God is saying, let it go, I will deal with it. Are we willing to trust God in our experiences tonight? Are we willing to trust God in our businesses, in our family situation, in our struggles, in our relationship, are we willing to trust God and say, God, I let it go and I am trusting you to address it? If we hold on to it, my friend, we are telling God we do not want his help. But I'm here to tell you, let it go. God, right now I command that, that we will get to that place in the name of Jesus, that we we'll let go the earth. The earths, the bitter things that hold us back in the name of Jesus. That we'll let it go. That we'll get to a place of trusting you. And, and say, look God, I have been offended. I have been hurt. I know I have cause to be angry. But I will not sin. I will trust you in this. Because you will get the honor and the glory. God, I'm letting go my disappointments. I'm letting go all the criticism that have been thrown my way. I'm letting go all the lies that they have told on me. I'm letting go all the backbiting and the gossiping that went against me. I'm letting go all the relation brokenness that I'm going through. I'm letting go that, 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 that husband or that wife who walked out on me. I'm letting go. Oh God, I'm letting go because I know you are better in store for me. I'm letting go God. I'm trusting you as I go through this. I'm letting go. Glory be to God. I'm letting go. That's what is needed, my friend. For us to let go all bitterness, all wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking, putting it away from us, putting away malice, putting away grudge, putting away hatred, that the glory of God can overtake us. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Resolution one, let it go. Let it go. Re resolution number two is important, my friend. Forgive those who have offended you. Yes, I did say forgive. Now, forgiveness is something that many of us find it very difficult to do. All of us find it difficult to do. We tend to say, they are the ones who offend us. Why should I forgive them? But yet, the word of God is telling us in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 15. It said, and I'm reading, you know, I, 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 that's why I love Bible study. God, everything in the Bible can address everything in our lives. 
And in Matthew 6 and 15, the Bible says, But if you do not forgive men of their sins, or their trespasses, or their debts, if you do not forgive men of these things, neither will God forgive you of your sins, or your trespasses, or your debts. In other words, we have a responsibility to forgive. As Christians, we are obligated to forgive as Christ has forgiven us. And this is what the, 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 the Ephesian is, is addressing us, my friend. That's what Paul says in, 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 in Ephesians chapter 4, 31 and 32. When he, he advises that we should, should put away all the things in, 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 in verse 31. In verse 32, Paul went further and said, Be kind one to another. Even those who are not kind to you, be kind to them. Tender hearty towards them. And then he, this is a critical thing. Forgiving one another, even as Christ has forgiven you. Imagine, my friend, that God is challenging us to get to a place. That place where it is He who is going to get the glory. The, the, the forgiveness we need to demonstrate, that's where Christ is taking us. The forgiveness, my friend, that is going to take a chunk of our, our will to demonstrate. But it is necessary because it's going to bring honor and glory to God. So we must understand forgiveness is critical here, my friend. If we are going to get to the place where we can laugh again, where we can smile again, where we can live in peace again, where bitterness is not a part of us anymore, and we are living life again, my friend, then God is saying, forgive the person. Yes, I know the person did you some harm, but forgive the person. I know the person walked out on you, but forgive the person. I know the person deceived you, but forgive the person. I know the person cheated on you, but forgive the person. I know the person robbed you, but forgive the person. I know the person worked witchcraft on you, but forgive the person. I know the person did you some stuff at the workplace, but forgive the person. Because it is then, it is when you forgive the person, then God will elevate you to the place where the glory of God will overtake your life my friend if you want to walk in the blessing of God then do some things that look hard like forgiveness can you forgive somebody tonight uh, yes call somebody and say look you are forgiven in the name of Jesus when you see them tomorrow give them a smile greet them with love let them know if they say look you, you are talking to me so nice what, what is the difference and look my friend I've learned something that I can forgive you because I serve a God who forgave me of all my sins I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore but my Savior looked deep within and came and rescued me rescued a man who was perishing rescued a woman who was perishing because of the forgiveness, the grace of the living God. I'm standing as a testimony before you today. I'm standing as a testimony because I am forgiven. Can I talk to somebody here in the name of Jesus? And because God has forgiven me, I want you to understand that you too can be forgiven. And if somebody has offended you, that person too can be forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Forgive the person to the glory and the honor of God. Hallelujah. No one preaching. Hallelujah. Mm. So let me just, I, I need to wrap up. There are two things I need to say as I wrap up. Resolution number three is change your mindset. In Romans 12 and verse 2, the Bible tells us, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In other words, the world is always telling us to behave contrary to the ways of God. The world is telling us we have right to be bitter. The world is telling us that it's okay to hold on to the grudge and to the malice. The world is telling us do not forgive. The world is saying they are the ones who offended. They deserve what they are getting. But we have to apply the word here. 
that we are not going to conform to the standards of the world. But we are going to trans be transformed. Our whole life, our whole being will be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We are going to take on that mindset that says, if this is what God wants, this is what I will do. If this is what will bring honor and glory to God, this is my responsibility. I'm not going to let the world set the standard. When the standard, the higher standard is already set by the true and living God. God has spoken, my friend. And if God says this is what ought to be done, then God, you must, you, it is what you said, Lord. That settles it. So we forgive. And our mind is in agreement. Then our actions will reflect such agreement. Isn't that wonderful, my friend? This is what God expects. And this is what we must demonstrate. Change your mindset. And the final thing is change your company or your counsel. Let, let me explain this. There, all of us are friends, family. We are people who provide us with advice when we need it. Whenever we are going to have a relationship with someone. We have some person we call and say, you know, I see a young man or a young lady and I like the person. What do you think? And somebody is always speaking a word into our lives, speaking a word into our spirits. Somebody is always addressing us. And we oftentimes listen to what these persons are saying. We, we, we do not want to question them because they are very important to who we are. So we, 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 we listen, we listen, we listen, we listen. But oftentimes, some of those persons we are listening to are people who we should not be entertaining counsel from. Some of the people who we are associated with are not people who bring honor and glory to God. They do not encourage us to become better. They, they do not encourage us in our walk with Christ. They do not encourage us to study the scriptures. They do not encourage us to attend church. They do not encourage us to pray. They do not encourage us in to things that are righteous. They do not encourage us along the path of holiness and righteousness. Everything about them is against the will and the way of God. But many of us have entertained them. So when it comes to the counsel they give in relation to the bitterness we are demonstrating in our lives. Their counsel is that it's okay to be bitter. Not the application of God's word to address the bitterness. Not a counsel to say, look, this is not of God. But the encouragement, it is okay. I'm here to, to say to us. The word of God tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. It says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits evil company corrupts good habits let me explain this to us oftentimes many of us allow the enemy to deceive us into believing that those who are around us everybody around us they all mean us well it's not everybody mean us well if a person is not going to help us to actualize that person does not mean us well if a person is not going to help us to live in peace, and when I say in peace, in peace, the, to, to help us to have peace with God, with peace with man, and peace within ourselves, then that person is not the person who God wants to counsel us. We need someone who is going to, be, to tell us, look, this is not of God. Bitterness is not of God. Bitterness does not bring honor or glory to God. Bitterness, my friend, is only going to lead to, to physical ill health. Yes, you, you, you are going to develop hypertension. Yes, you are going to develop diabetes because your body, because of all these, these external things taking place and you have, you have now drawn them internally, then they are going to work on your physical state. Then all of a sudden you have to be feeding on medication 
instead of trusting God to work your situation out. My friend, God wants us to get to a place where our trust for Him is of such where we are saying, God, I know I am not perfect. I know I have feelings in my life, but I will trust your word because I hear you saying that bitterness is not something I should entertain and I should, should put away all these bitter things from me. I should put away anger and clamor and all these things away. I hear you, Lord, and I'm hearing some people saying otherwise. So because of that, I'm going to listen to wise counsel. I'm going to change my counsel in the name of Jesus. You must understand, my friend, if you have a lawyer and the lawyer is not giving you good counsel, you need to change the lawyer. Can I talk to somebody here? I said, if you have somebody who is your advisor and they are giving you poor advice, then you need to change your advisor. If you, my friend, uh, 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 seek a counselor and your counselor is unable to, to provide good counsel then you need to change your counselor can I talk to somebody in the name of Jesus in the same way I say to you if you are hanging around some folks who are not beneficial to your growth who are not beneficial to your spiritual upliftment who are not beneficial to your development then you need to change those folks and find the right people who can build you up to the glory and the honor of God. Yes, it's not it you hate them. It's because you love God more than or you love the, the, the advice that they are giving you. It's because you want the will of God to be done in your life while you are making a decision to bring honor and glory to God. We need to do what is right to please God, not to please man. Hallelujah. So with this said, my friend, with this said, we must understand where God wants to take us. We must understand that bitterness, if we are going to be free from it, I, 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 I have provided the, the, these four, these four uh, resolutions as I seek to wrap this up. Yes, just a reminder that we need to let it go. Resolution one. Resolution 2 is that we must forgive those who have offended us. Re resolution 3, my friend, is that we need to change our mindset. Resolution number 4, my friend, is simply saying that we may need to change our company, our counsel. This is, these are, are just simple wor words that we need to apply to our situation as we address the spirit of bitterness in our lives. So with this said, My friends, there's no reason why we should continue to be bitter and holding on to the grudge, holding us back. There's no reason why we should live out of the will of God, not walking along the pathway that God has designed for us. There's no reason why we should continue to stumble along in this life instead of trusting our God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, my friend. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. And I will close by just reading the passage again. Do not, my friend, as we seek to bring you closer into these Bible studies. Please again, feel free to, uh, to support the book ministry. I have shared to have and to hold as your book for this week. Please visit Amazon Books and you may type in to have and to hold uh, Onimuna's devotional and the author's name Leo Paul as you know and you may support me and also I say to you my friend please subscribe to the YouTube channel that is broadcasting this and like the video and share it with someone thanks for joining and thanks for watching with us we are indeed excited and we are happy to be able to be sharing with you this evening and look forward to next week's broadcast when we'll bring you again for a virtual Bible study, Life in the World.
The Lord bless you, my friend.